Hey guys, so this is going to be my first question and answers video and it's going to be fairly short because I obviously don't have like a lot of subscribers or a lot of questions like being asked but I mean it doesn't really matter to me as long as I have a few like I'd love to answer them for you and like answer, answer them in a way that you'll like understand better like rather than just typing it out quickly and stuff because I mean when you watch people's YouTubes and stuff like you can only see what's on the screen you don't see what goes on behind the camera or why something's happened or what's happened to something, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna do like a really quick brief overview of like what happens when you're not watching my videos and like what stuff you just don't understand. So I'm gonna start out with question number one and it's by Horse Prince. She says, what happened to Raja? Is he still alive? <laughs> Raja is still alive. Um, I hope he's doing well. I haven't spoken to his owner in a long time, but I actually leased Raja and he was not mine. I was basically doing a lease to purchase, but I found early in the lease that he wasn't really what I wanted in a horse to purchase, and he was more of a laid-back western horse, and I ride, as you know, English. I do do some west western with karma, but I'm mostly an English rider, so I don't do as much western, and Raja was a Tennessee walker, so he didn't do jumping. He was only gated, and... I basically was just like learning to ride on him. I mean, I took lessons and stuff before him, but he was my like learn to horse and go to horse for like stuff that I wasn't sure of or if I was like not confident. He was a very well built, confident build, building horse. Like he was really good for that. Like if you were just starting out riding, he was perfect. So yeah, Raja's fine. He had to go back to his owner. I had him for officially like 11 months and to tell you the truth, I didn't get to know him until he was um, with me for like nine months. It took me that long because Raja had a block. He had put a block up and he didn't let anybody else get into his brain. He was very fearful of humans. He was very shy. He didn't like people. He would run away from people in the pasture, even me. And it took me a very long time to get into his brain and to be able to maneuver him the way I wanted him to be as a horse and as a riding horse and it took me so long to build a relationship with him and it really taught me how to build a relationship with a horse like completely and he had been abused so that's what all I know he was more scared of men than he was women because I think that the man that had owned him previously did abuse him and that's not the owner I gave him back to I would never give him back to an owner that was abusing him his owner right now is female she's a teenager and she's very nice to him she gives him apples and stuff. I've witnessed it. So, yeah, Raja was abused, and um, he went back to a good home. So, that's good. Um, someone asked, uh, did I forget to put it under who it was? Oh, this is the same. Okay, this is Horse Prince again. Um, do I ever ride other horses? Oops. Do I ever ride other horses at my barn? Um, no, I do not at the moment. Um. I have my hands too full right now, Karma. I'm basically like training her and stuff. She's almost green broke, I guess you could say. To me, she wasn't green broke when I got her, but she's getting green broke now. So, um, I don't ride any other horses right now. I previously did. I rode two other horses that I have not shown in videos. And if you hear that, that's my dog. So, yeah, she's going crazy downstairs. She's locked away in her little dog pen with the other two dogs. And so she's just, you know, locked up and she's pissed. <laughs> Because my parents have friends over there on the outside, and they're hanging out, and they're listening to music, and she's mad, but she's not being in that kind of situation. She's not having fun. So, yeah, if you hear her. Um, and about the riding other horses, I don't at the moment. Uh, I used to when I took lessons and before I got karma, and now I'm training karma. I rode uh, how many different horses? I started out on... One before the barn was the way it is today because there was two owners and I started riding at my barn when there was a different owner and his name was Dallas and he was an Appaloosa and then I rode a horse named Dixie and she was a black quarter horse I think and then I rode a horse named George and he was a pony quarter horse though I think he was a quarter horse so he was a pony and I, I learned western on all the horses I just um, like mentioned. And then after that, I started writing English because, um, oh no, his name wasn't George, sorry, his name was Job. Job, yeah, I started writing Job, which is Pony, like I said, and um, he had to move with his owner, like his owner had to move somewhere, so I didn't get to ride him anymore, and I learned Western on him. And then my trainer 
um, was like, do you want to learn English? And I was like, sure, because that's the only courses left that she has were English. So I was just like, okay, I guess I'll write English. Like, she could have put a Western saddle on, but they were trained English because they're thoroughbreds. So I rode a horse first named George in English, and he was a chestnut thoroughbred and really tall. I had to uh, ride him on the lunge line to learn how to post. And then after that, I rode Jack, and Jack is a bay thoroughbred. He has secretariat in his bull lines, and I started learning on him. And then I rode a horse named Bob, and he's a white thoroughbred. He's actually flea bitten gray. And then I rode Jack again, and I learned to jump low jumps on him. And then I got Raja, and I had Raja for like 11 months, and then I had Karma, and she's my first like official horse like I bought her like she's mine but and it, like I have papers and everything but Raja he wasn't like officially mine but I took care of him and I fed him and I paid everything for him so he was mine for like 11 months but he had an owner elsewhere so he had two owners basically but she never came to see him or anything so he was like mine the whole time and then um do I live close to Karma's house <laughs> yeah I live close to Karma's house she lives at a stable obviously I board her there um, I wish she was in my backyard, but my backyard is fairly small, and it's, like, in a very big, like, neighborhood, and there's houses next to each other. I wouldn't say that they're, like, right next to each other, but I, there's no way I could put a horse there. My backyard's the golf course, and I have, like, a small, like, fenced-in yard for my dog, so, like, I couldn't keep her in my backyard. But she's really close. She's right up the road. I could bike if I wanted to. Walking, it takes, like, an hour, though, but it's, like, it's literally, like, my neighborhood is, like, far away from everything like you could say I live out in the country but I live in like a big neighborhood out in the country so it's not like my house is plot out on a field <laughs> like it's in an actual like neighborhood it's down a cul-de-sac and the neighborhood is really big actually so you drive very far out of the neighborhood and then you get to a very long road and there's a bunch of farms on the road because you can say I can live out I live out in the country and then um, on the side of the road, there's my stable. So Karma lives five minutes away when you drive. And do I have a job? <laughs> no, I don't have a job at the moment. Um, I used to work at the stable. I almost worked at a dog groomer place because my dogs have to go to groomers every week because they, I don't know, my mom likes to put them at the groomers. So, yeah, anyways. Um, I almost worked there. Uh, the owner asked me to come and stuff, but then there was, like, a bunch of confusion, and, like, so I didn't. Um... So I don't have a job at the moment, but I looked for a few and put application in, applications in. So, I mean, I'm open to getting a job. It's not like I'm like, I don't want a job. Oh, God, I'm lazy. No, I'm like, I actually do want a job. But I also have to wait till I get my car, which I get one in September. So, yeah. And what are my dreams in life? My dreams in life are I would love to be a horse trainer, but I know it takes a lot of work and it's dangerous because you have to know exactly what you're doing. You have to be able to read horses really well. So I'm not sure what I really want to do. If I don't do horse training or lessons instructor or whatever if I don't do any of that in the horse industry I'm probably going to go into cosmetology for hair and makeup and stuff and nails so I'm probably going to do that um um Mookie Smiles said is Karma my first horse like I said no um Raja was my first official horse pretty much so Karma is my second horse um Alex OE P1 says how did I buy Karma? I bought Karma online. Like I, okay, it's a really long story, like how I got Karma. So I'm just gonna tell you a really short story. But um, I was looking for a horse. My preferable breed was Arabian. I've always loved Arabians. And another, my second favorite breed is a thoroughbred. Like I love thoroughbreds and I love Arabians. And um, I was looking for one or the other, and I kept looking for Arabians because they're my favorite horse, and I could not find one at all. Like I was looking everywhere. They were either either like bred so well and they were like in the hundred thousands because they're bred so well and they weren't broke so that did not work for me it wasn't what I was looking for I was looking for a mare I was like I would have gotten gelding or mare it didn't matter but I was looking for a mare I was looking for the ages two to seven I was looking for obviously the breed Arabian and I was looking for it to be um broke already so that's what I had to look for um I wanted to train a horse myself, and I wanted to grow up with a horse, so um, I was looking all over online. I looked on Horse Clicks, Equine Now, um, Dream Horse, 
um, equine.com. So I looked on a bunch of different websites, and I saw Karma on there, and her her uh, registered name was Karma TVF, and I saw her pictures. I fell in love. I was like, oh my gosh, she is the most beautiful horse I have ever seen. Her price was so high. I was like, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get this horse. I'm gonna tell you how much she was listed. She was listed for thirteen thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. And we were like looking for a reasonable price. We weren't looking for thirteen thousand dollars. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, my parents are never gonna let me. But I emailed the lady anyways, and turned out that she was gonna have me come to the show. She's like, okay, I'll put the price down a lot. And she put it down a lot for me. She gave me a really reasonable offer and said I can come by her. But then I asked my dad. He said yes. And then. Like, later in that week, my dad said no. He was, like, in a bad mood. I don't know. He told me I couldn't get her anymore. He's like, I'm sorry, but you're not going to get her. He's like, you don't need a horse right now. Look for a horse to lease again. So he wanted me to lease again like I did with Raja. And so I was really, really, really sad. Like, I cried, and I was just, like, really upset because I wanted karma so bad. And then um, months later, like, maybe six months later. Okay, no, just kidding. A year later. Like, literally a year later, um, my dad was like, okay, you can get a horse. He's like, I know it's so hard to find a leased horse because everybody wants to sell their horse. So then I was like, okay. So then I went back to the lady to see if she still had karma because they had unlisted her from the sites and stuff. And so I went back to her and turned out she was asking for even more money than she was asking in the first place because karma had been trained a lot more. And then I was just kind of like, well, I can't afford that. I have to have like the price that you and me agreed on. And then, like, she was like, I'll think about it. So then I had to wait for her to talk to her husband and stuff about, like, putting the price down and stuff. So I waited a little bit, and then finally she, like, was like, okay, we can agree on that price. And I was like, all right, great. So then I told my dad, and me and my dad went up there on a Saturday, and my dad fell in love with her, and he bought her right there. So that's what happened with Karma. And then did I get Karma when I was little? I got her when she was three, so I, I've had her for about two months, three months. So she's a new, she's a fairly new toy to me. <laughs> And, um, did I buy her off a website? Sort of. I didn't pay them off the website. I paid them with cash, but, um, yeah. I looked online and I found her. And then, um, my horse asked, is Karma Arabian? Yes, Karma is Arabian. She's Polish Arabian. Um, does Karma live at my house? No. Is the barn yours? No. Also, um, I should make a video on some fun ways to how to desensitize your horse. And I did that. <laughs> um, Miss Country Girl said, Why'd you get rid of Raja and Karma is pretty? Thank you for saying Karma's pretty. And why did I get rid of Raja? I got rid of Raja because he wasn't what I was looking for. I loved him and he was a great starter out horse, but he was Tennessee Walker and I do jumping and stuff, so that wasn't really what I was looking for. Um, 11795 Sparky asked, um, how, to... oh, okay, how to have a better relationship with your horse, do you know how to do that? Um, yeah, basically, it's not, you don't just get, um, a relationship with a horse. Horses are really hard to gain relationships with, and it takes really a lot of time and effort, and it takes you to be a strong person and to just be patient because horses aren't going to just give you their trust. You're like predator to them and their prey. So horses don't just give out their hearts and brains and minds to everybody. You're not going to know what your horse is thinking at first. You have to really study your horse and learn exactly what he's thinking because it's going to take a lot of time. And I have to be patient with karma because I'm having the same issues I had with Raja in the beginning and everybody's going to have those issues because it's a brand new horse and you're a new person to that horse. So when you have a horse and you don't feel like you have a good relationship with your horse, don't be discouraged because it's going to take a lot of time. It's an animal. It's a huge, huge animal. And they don't think the way humans think and they can't tell you and talk to you like humans can talk to you. Horses have different ways of talking to people. And I actually just learned something today that I had no clue. Um, I learned that when horses snore, it actually means they're angry. And Karma does that quite a, quite a few times when I'm cantering and trotting her. When she feels like she's being worked, she does it. And I kind of picked up on it a little bit, but I didn't. And then I heard it from someone else, and I was like, okay, well, I guess that's true. You know, horses, they communicate in different ways than people. And you can set yourself up to fail with your horse if you're not understanding their cues and their signs and their signs and their signals, what they're telling you. And horses have a lot of different ways of communicating, and it's just about learning those communications. So that's what I had to say about that. And then um, 
gaining a relationship is really to gain a relationship with your horse like I said takes time patience um, you're gonna want to um, lunge your horse every time you come up to the stable lunge your horse if you're not gonna ride I guess you don't have to like if you don't have time for anything but I would say like before you ride lunge your horse and I'd say lunge them both ways I'd say walk trot and canter do not let them start to trot when you don't ask or canter when you don't ask you have to ask if they start doing that stop them immediately and make them do it again until they get it right just keep making them consistently do exactly what you ask you never let a horse get away with something because then they'll just run with it so I have that it would I have that issue with Carmen. She's really smart. She learns things in like a day or two. And so it's really hard because she'll learn such bad behaviors immediately. Like bucking. I let her bunk, buck once. Not let I let her. But she got away with bucking once. And now she bucks every single day. And I'm paying the price for letting her buck that one time. So I'm just trying to tell you and stress that it's important to listen to your horse. And not to let your horse get away with things. And to build a relationship with the horse, like I said, takes time. And what you're going to have to do, lunch and keep them on a consistent schedule and... Um, understand that they're a horse and horses don't show affection like humans do they're different they're going to show affection in other ways they're going to show affection by listening that's affection because they're listening to you they respect you having a relationship with your horse requires them having respect it requires them to listen to you which is part of respect and respect is probably the biggest thing and for them to follow you and to look to you for answers they're going to question you a lot, and they're going to test you, and that means that they're curious about you and that they want to learn more about you, and that's the first sign in them wanting to build a relationship with you. So take that step and answer their question and tell them what to do, and then they're going to learn they have to listen to you and that you're their comfort zone, and that is how you're going to build a relationship with the horse, and I hope that these helped you with all your questions and stuff. If you want me to make another video like this, let me know because I love answering questions. I love teaching people about horses and I wish this could be my career because I honestly like, love it. It would be just twice as better as it is now being paid for it. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye.